called the standard approach to research. You will start with an introduction to your papers or PhDs or whatever. Then you will have to introduce a literature review. So introduction, literature review. You will derive operational definitions from there. Hypothesis, methods, findings, discussions on findings, conclusion. So what's it? Now, the way it actually starts, what I'm showing you is topic selection, literature review. It's basically a rather standard way, standard approach to research. Now, you're right when you say that I should hypothesis start. In fact, most of the time you start with a question. Robert Marshall was fascinated by the use of earned value management. That's why he wanted to uh, prove, or at least to show that there was a link between the use of earned value management and project success. That's how he started in the first place. Okay. So in a way, you're right when you say that, should we start with the hypothesis? Well, starting with an hypothesis, starting with an idea, is often a good thing because you will have the motivation to do the research. The only problem is if you don't find what you're after. I've seen students like that. They start, they want to prove this, they want to prove that. Uh, I'm so happy. And then they hear things well. Ah, gosh, I didn't find what I was after. It's like explosion in flight. They disappear. You don't see them anymore. So it's risky. It's good, but risky. It's good because it will motivate you. But the problem is, what if you don't find what you're after? What, are you strong enough to, which is something called symmetry of outcome. When you start doing research, you should make sure that if you find what you're after, you win, and if you don't find it, you don't lose. Okay. That's something we see how to do tomorrow. So hypothesis, I'm showing you here the standard way of doing research, but in fact, you are right, most of the time, people will start with, they already have an idea what they want to prove. This is good, because they get motivated, but this is bad at the same time, because they have a tendency to lose motivation, they don't find exactly what they're after. They have a tendency often to uh, confuse hypothesis with uh, aims or goals. That's what I was showing you that before, theories are not aims or goals or uh, an hypothesis is something that you, you don't know if it's true or not. And I will say that uh, as a researcher, you have to put yourself in something called equipose where you are non-judgmental and, uh, uh, well, it's very difficult to reach, but you have to try to do that when you do research. I, I mean, uh, another solution is, that's the way I do it, so I, I can, is you start already with clear ideas of what you want to do. You do whatever you want to do on you, the way you want to do it. Me, I do it my way. I don't care about anything. But then, when comes the day to plan my research, I will go back to exactly this. I will follow a very standard procedure to presenting my research. So there is a way I actually do my research, and there is a way I present my research. Those are two di entirely different things. At this stage, let just let just let me show you what we mean by um, by um, by what I call the uh, what is what is it it's called it's called um, our goals of research. The cyclical nature of the practice of research. Are we start topic selection, research. I want to show you that this is something circular. It never ends. It's the wheel of research. Now, hypothesis. From hypothesis, in fact, I could um, already have a cookie. From hypothesis, I get to data collection. Well, again, uh, I could actually data collection, or data, hypothesis, data, collection, or collection and analysis, data collection, data analysis. Data analysis here. You follow. Explanation. Oh, again, uh, this is a typical thing you find in a typical paper. You explain what you found. Discussion. Well, findings. In fact, in a real uh, in a real paper, a real PhD, you collect the data. Okay. You have first findings where you present what you found, and another section discussion where you discuss. What you find, it's not exactly the same thing. Yeah? Reporting what you found has to be neutral. I found that uh, uh, this particular group scored that much above that group on this and that variable. Blah, blah, blah. You just explain. You show graphs, you explain. You, you explain what you found. Okay? You don't interpret the data yet. Then you stop interpreting the data. You say, okay, now this is related to this because of that, because of that, because of that. Then you explain what you found. So the same thing as showing what you found. Okay? But first, you explain what you are going to do. Then you do it. Then you explain what you've done. 
And then you try to make sense of what explaining it. So it's some kind of, that, uh, that's the way it is. Okay. Data analysis, and then publication. Publication, again, very important, publication. You publish, and then you restart all over again. Okay. From publication, someone one day will read your paper, and you will be again including the big wheel of research. So you never finish. Now, another way that research never ends is when you stop looking for one idea, they're all related to one another. I don't know if you, me personally, I love this. Uh, I know many researchers will warn you against uh, uh, the Wikipedia, but I personally love the Wikipedia because, all, first of all, I think the job is well done, uh, at least for the things I know. So I have a tendency to trust the other things. Uh, and also, each time you, you, you read something, there are all those hypertext links where you can click on the word, they're all related to each other. So you, you end up you know, going everywhere. And, uh, and well, I'm showing you the example of Wikipedia because Wikipedia is, is a miniature version of what happened to you when you do research. This link to this, link to this, link to this, link to that, link to that, link to that. Link to that. You end up with it everywhere. And this is the way it's supposed to be when you do your PhD at first. You're supposed to end up a little bit everywhere, not knowing where you are for at least a few months. If you already know where you are, it means you haven't done your job properly. <laughs> so, well, yeah, if you believe that you know where you are, that's normal. Because that's the way you're supposed to be when you really start. If we don't know. If we don't know. If you don't know at all, well, no, no, at this moment, I mean, if we don't know, it's, this is the wrong way. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> actually, uh, you know, so sometimes, uh, if you don't know, it's normal. If you, if you don't know, it's normal. Now, there's a difference between not, know, not knowing and being completely lost. But the difference is, is timing. <laughs> okay, and I, I don't know at this stage in which category you are. Okay, mm, completely lost or not knowing because you you're just starting. Uh, so at, at the very beginning, everybody is, is undetermined. You know? is, uh, everybody is. Uh, so then things will will be sorted out. Only time will sort things out. That's what I know from experience. Only time will will tell us. What the future will be. The rest, uh, some promising student may completely miss, others may reappear uh, out of the blue after, and uh, so um, everything is possible. Now, the only important thing, as we'll see again tomorrow, is of course writing, because if you don't get to write your PhD, you will never get your PhD. Okay? But well, right now, I'm more into uh, the concept of research. So there is a cyclical aspect to, to research. Okay. Also, research will bring more research, and then... Um, uh, let me continue with... with uh, then there are the five goals of research. It's very important. Goals of research, there are five. This is very important. Now, surprisingly, yes? Um, coming back to your point on uh, yeah. uh, hypothesis and operation and definition. Yeah. Uh, so... So sometimes the, the general truth can be taken as a hypothesis, isn't it? Like for example, you are giving Robert Marshall's example, yeah. uh, earn value management and project uh, uh, success. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, it could be considered as a truth itself. Like, okay, if you have earn value management, you track projects better. And if you track projects better, uh, the project will be successful. So it's like there is a missing uh, uh, problem, a missing component there, which is uh, which doesn't make it look like a truth. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, actually, see, there is. A, I give you that example to show you that it was deductive. There is a of deduction, but by deduction, deduction alone won't get take, get you very far. Okay, I give you the example of. Um, Aristotle who believed that there were, uh, maybe it was Plato, uh, anyway, it was Plato. He believed that women had less teeth than men. He proved it by means of deduction. He was a very smart guy. Uh, I've, I'm not half, halfway as smart as he was, but A implies B, B implies C, C implies D. A is correct, therefore women have less teeth than men. Now, with formal logic, you can prove virtually anything. I don't know who said that. Uh, uh, I don't know, geometry is the art of reasoning correctly on wrong uh, figures, but logic is the same thing. It's the art of reasoning correctly on uh, eventually false premises. So deductive logic is never enough 
to get you anywhere, okay? Take, take the example of economics. Well, I'm sorry, but personally, I don't believe that economics is a science. You can prove virtually anything with economics. I know economists are stupid people. Actually, most of them are very smart. Uh, it's just that they are using logic without empirical evidence. Like Plato did when he tried to prove that uh, women have less teeth than men. Ultimately, formal logic alone is not sufficient to get you anywhere. You need empirical evidence. You need to actually count, go out there and count the number of teeth of women. Do it. And you find out that actually your logic is wrong. When you're telling me that consumers are rational, go out there and, show, and I'll show you that consumers are not rational. So drop, drop this, okay? Uh, so there is something that I think has become the standard now of practice. It's called uh, logical empiricism. Basically, you have to have a logical structure to things, but that has to be backed up by empirical evidence. Okay. Yes, it makes sense. And look, when I collect evidence, it goes exactly my way. That's the best way. Or look at the evidence that can be best understood in light of this idea and that idea. So if you combine the best of empirical evidence and the best of logical thinking, you get something called logical empiricism. And this is Personally, this is the approach I have to things. This is the one that's been the most successful over the last centuries. This is the principle behind science. Just from a logic without anything will get you nowhere. It's the economists of today. Uh, actually, actually, the eco economists of today are the same as the astrologers of yesterday. Same, same idea. Just astrology has, has become now economics. People used to be in the star era. Today, uh, decision makers won't, won't make any decision before talking to a bunch of economists. Uh, but actually, they don't do any better than, uh, than astronomers of, of all day. They can't predict the next crash. Uh, uh, ask, ask, ask astrologers or economists what they think the stock market would be like in a couple of months. You get plenty of different answers. Uh, so, and basically, just ask astrologers, they do exactly the same job. And astrologers are not specialists of economics at all. So, so personally, uh, why? Well, because you, if you use the logic of that, I should have a strong logic. Yeah. It, it, the only problem is it's not back, it's not based on empirical evidence. So logic alone will lead you nowhere. And if you just collect a bunch of empirical evidence without any strong, uh, well, you just have a bunch of data, a bunch of recipes, a bunch of, of data that are meaningless, a theoretical, uh, and say uh, soup of data, uh, or what's the use of it? So at one moment you need to abstract something, you need to step back and get some kind of, of big, big, big idea. So you need both, you need empirical evidence and uh, logic. And that's something you will be doing in your research. In your research, you will need strong logic and strong empirical evidence. Okay? Um, uh,